Today, we are going to be talking about the different types of herpes. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. and My name is Sarah. So before we get into today's video, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and download the free guide that I've created for you guys. This is a care guide that tells you how to care for your herpes 1 outbreaks and your herpes 2 outbreaks. And then I also on that guide have two products that I recommend that for your cold sores and one for your genital herpes outbreaks. These are natural products and they're inexpensive. So you're going to go ahead and find that on your care guide of what to do when you get these outbreaks. So go ahead to this page. It should be in this video here. Go to this page and enter your email address to get that free guide. The first type of herpes that most people know, it is herpes 1. So herpes 1 is your common cold sore and this is transmitted via drinking, sharing drinking glasses, or kissing people. Now most people have herpes 1, but some people never get an outbreak, they never get a cold sore. Now, if the way for you to know whether or not you have herpes 1 would be number one, to go to your doctor and to get tested. And number two, if you ever notice that you're getting a cold sore around your lips, cold sore or some thin walled pimples that will be recurring in the same spot over and over. They're kind of blister like and they can be painful. And that can happen on the corners of your lips. It can happen on your gums. It can happen on your eyelids. So pretty much we see that, I want to say anywhere you have a mucous membrane, but those are some of your mucous membranes on your face. So if you ever see um, some people can get like a pimple in their eye, that may be herpes. I'm not saying that it is, but it can be. It can be herpes 1. But most of the time when you are getting a herpes outbreak on your lips, it will be like a cold sore. And you'll be able to probably feel it coming on before it actually outbreaks, before you get an outbreak. Okay, so the next type of herpes is herpes type 2, genital herpes. This is sexually transmitted. Now, a common question that people ask is whether or not if you have herpes 1, can you get it in your genitalia? If you have herpes 2, can you get it in your mouth? I would say to be careful, if you're having an outbreak of any sort, do not be exchanging any type of bodily fluids with anyone at all until the outbreak has subsided because at this point when your outbreak is visible it's going to be way more prone or way more likely for you to spread it to someone else so yes i would say to be careful if you have a cold sore and you are going to go and give oral sex um, because you can probably expose that person to something that they probably otherwise wouldn't have and if you are having a outbreak on your genitalia you probably you want to stay away from sex and you want to stay away from oral sex so genital type herpes, genital type herpes, genital herpes 2 is commonly known as herpes. This is what most people think about when they think about herpes, they think about genital herpes type 2. So if you have sex with somebody who has genital herpes, that person may have an active outbreak or they may not. But if they have it, there is a risk that you can be exposed to it. And the way that this happens is that once you have sex with this person, it's a skin-to-skin -skin disease. So that virus enters your body through skin, and then it travels to your spine, and it sits at the and then it sits at the nerve groups at the base of the spine. So this is why I had recommended bitters because bitters is supposed to get down to the root of your spine for any diseases that you may have. So the first outbreak is usually four to eight days after you've been exposed. So usually this happens rather quickly. Think about something entering your skin and then it's traveling down to the base of your spine. So this is why most people, when they get an outbreak or when they've been exposed to genital herpes, they know right away because it happens immediately. So this virus can be dormant for a majority of your life. Some people go five years, two years, 10 years, 20 years, without any type of outbreak. There are a lot of Americans who are living with genital herpes and they have no idea because they've never received an outbreak or they never had an outbreak of any sort. So it's always best to know your status, <laughs> know, your, know all of your health, know what's going on with your health, what's going on with your sexual health, especially before entering in, into a new relationship with somebody else. So some things that can cause a genital herpes outbreak 
would be poor diet, it can be high amounts of stress, it can be high arginine foods, which will be in a video on this channel. I'm going to go ahead and link that here. The foods that you should be avoiding if you have genital herpes. And it can also be irritation to the skin. Now this virus can lay in your body dormant for years. So you, your, everybody's body is different. Everybody's body reacts to viruses and invaders and things of that nature differently. So you want to be paying close attention to your body when you are engaging in any type of behavior that's going to put you at risk. After 50, when you after you turn 50 years old, outbreaks tend to be very rare. You probably will never get an outbreak. Um, so I just want to let you guys know that if you have been exposed to genital herpes, it's really a disease, disease of the skin, a virus of the skin, a virus that flares up in your skin when you're stressed, when you're not eating correctly, when you're not doing all of the things that you should be doing for your overall health. The stigma and the shame around it, it's really unnecessary because people are not educated. You can live a happy, healthy life with this virus. So before we get into the final type of herpes, I do have a herpes masterclass where I go over all of the things that you should be eating, all of the things that you can be using in nature, the herbs you can be using, the foods to eliminate, and how to put your trust in God to receive healing power and to manage this virus. The class has almost over two hours of content where I show you the blueprint of what to do if you find yourself in this situation. So that class is going to be linked in the description bar as well. And I hope to see you all in the class. And then the last type of herpes that we have is herpes type 3. And this is also known as shingles. Now shingles is going to be very, very, it's going to be something that you can get if you're exposed to poisonous substances, metals, drugs, and other toxic substances. This presents as small round clusters that are similar to what chicken pox looks like. It's the same virus as the chicken pox, but just what it happens when you are an adult. Herpes type 3, which is also known as shingles, usually occurs after the age of 50. So this is something that you we need to be very aware about as we age and we get older and we are in environments that are not optimal for our health if we're living in cities we're living places where we're not really um, in pure environments or we're eating a lot of toxic processed foods we want to be aware of these things if you are experiencing shingles the one thing that i'm going to say is to be very very careful of if you are experiencing a shingle in your eye because this can lead to blindness so that is one thing that you're going to want to get medical attention for quickly is if you are getting shingles in your eyes some key things to do if you have herpes type 3 is going to be to clean out your bowels frequently. You're going to want to be doing this through enemas. You're going to be wanting to doing this with water, drinking a lot of water. And you're going to want to be going to, your, to the bathroom regularly throughout the day so that you're flushing out your system. You're also going to be wanting to using fruits and vegetables, which is also going to be alternating with a fruit and vegetable fast, which will help you also clean out your bowels quickly. Lastly, you want to be eating foods like raw vegetables and brown rice, which are foods that are alkalized. So alkaline, you want to be eating alkaline foods. When you have shingles, there are so many other things that you can do. And if you guys want to see me do another video about shingles, you can go ahead and comment down below that you would like that. And I can get that video out to you guys next. And then the last thing that you're going to want to do is that if you're having shingles, herpes type 3, Another natural remedy is that you're going to want to take hot baths. And these hot baths should be done two to three times per week. So that is what I'm going to leave you with today. So again, you guys are going to go ahead and download that guide where I'm going to have everything kind of written out for you in a nice way for you to follow, for you to start making these changes to your life if you have herpes. And then as always, if you guys have any more questions or concerns, you can go ahead and comment it down below. Okay, so I will see you guys next Sunday in the next video. Have a good week. Take care, guys. Bye.